Hey, how's it going guys and welcome to something a little different today on my channel now I always get asked Fuji who do you support? Well, I support Newcastle United and for those that do know you always ask me What do I think about that player? How do you think about him doing well at the club? So today not only for myself but I thought I'd actually produce a video on the potential FIFA 16 ultimate team Newcastle United squad Well FIFA 16 Newcastle squad in fact uh, I've got a couple of players that haven't actually completed their transfer yet But they are transferred rumors as it is a potential squad so I know it's not to everybody's taste but as a Newcastle fan I thought I'd give you guys my views on a couple of the players at the club and what I think the team's gonna do so if you do enjoy please do drop a like and show your support and um, before we get into the video though if you are looking for some very cheap ultimate team coins make sure to check out FIFA ultimate team coins.com get ready for those footy cars the pink cards which are dropping on Wednesday go stock up and go and use my code Fuji and if you're looking for anything gaming related game codes PSN Xbox live check out G2A and go and use code Fuji as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the graphics. It's just something that I put together last night. Uh, it did take me a while, so I appreciate you guys just showing your support. That'd be awesome. But let's go through the team. This is why you are here. So in the starting 11, we do in fact have a Tim Krull. Now for me, Tim Krull at times is questionable. Although he has improved over the years, some of his decision making isn't too great. His kicking is terrible as well. I don't know what's up, but he can't seem to kick the ball. He always either kicks it out or he's just got terrible accuracy. Um, but I don't think he gets the recognition that he does actually deserve. Like Newcastle, uh, well, last season for sure, their defence just wasn't on point at all. And he actually kept us out in, in some of the games. And he helped us to either get the win or just get the draw. And then as a substitute, I've gone for Elliot. So on to the right back. And we do in fact have Daryl Yanmat starting. Now, Yanmat for me has improved since he's joined the club. Although he's not an out and out right back, uh, he's more or less like a win back. I would personally play him as more or less a defence right mid because he does like to uh, bomb up the pitch and offers that support in the attack crossing the balls in so I am happy with him doing that but defensively he's questionable at times but I think he has got better and as a substitute I don't really feel that there we, we have a right back at the club like they're seeing as Ryan Taylor now has been released uh, same with Gutierrez uh, yeah, the squad depth is looking a little bare in that department. Usually, Anita would drop back and um, play there if, if he needs to be. But it, Anita, he doesn't want to be playing right back, let's face it. So, yeah, I've decided to go with Yamat and just leave the substitute as as a question mark because I'm not really too sure at the minute. So, moving over to the centre-back, and we do have Matip. Now, he is transferred rumours. He hasn't completed the deal. It's, uh, it's around 10 million or so. Now, I'm going to be honest and say I've never seen him play. I've never really heard of anything bad about him but then again yeah I haven't really heard anything good he's just he's just a youngster uh, he's got a little bit of potential and he's from the Bundesliga so if you guys know if he's any good please do drop that in the comments but I think that he would be a good signing and without a doubt seeing as Colicini uh, could be rumored to leave to Crystal Palace for two million then we're gonna definitely need some uh, some defenders but as a substitute we've got Williamson I I don't like Williamson at all I think he's awful he's not Premier League quality but I've had to drop him in there just because of the squad depth it's very very poor moving over to the left center back now and we do have Colaccini now like I was saying Colaccini is linked with Crystal Palace I honestly feel that he may not make the move uh, just for the fact that he wants to actually go back to Argentina that's what he's been saying he wanted to leave last season but I don't know it just broke down a little bit so if he doesn't go I think he'll have one more season with us and then we will desperately need to look for a center back but we need to look for a center back anyway like right now in the window if we don't get one then it's gonna have a repeat of what happened last season with how poor we were at the back but as a substitute we've got Lascelles in there he's come back from loan now uh, he's young uh, obviously inexperienced but I think he's got some qualities about him so I'm looking forward to seeing how well he does uh, but yeah the back line definitely needs some work so over to the left back and we do have Haidara now when I've seen the guy play he's still young uh, I've, I've liked what I've seen although he's not the best but he's still inexperienced Experience. He likes to bomb down that line. He's quite physical. His crosses into the box. Yes, they do need to improve. And I feel Hydara and Dummett are just squad rotation players. So we definitely need to sign a left back. I think we were rumored uh, to sign uh, Jetro Willems. Um, not really too sure about him uh, at all. I don't know what he's like in real life. Really, I don't watch the Air Um But he could be a good signing maybe for us. I'm not really too sure. Um, but yeah, definitely left back department. We need we need someone and especially to like cover the right back position as well like we need some support in the defense so over to the center mid position 
and we have probably one of my favorite players at the club currently and it is Jack Colback ever since he joined he just gelled with the side and single-handedly I feel with the goals just the way he was playing uh, tracking back how versatile he was I think he helped to keep us up as well so I like him he's a good player he's got the heart and passion and uh, yeah he's just uh, he's the ginger perlo come on no he's not the ginger perlo but he's a good player and as a substitute we've got De Jong I feel that I've never seen too much of him because I think he was injured as well like he, he, he came on a couple of times um but I don't know what I make of him yet I haven't seen what he can offer so hoping that the season to come he's fully fit and he does actually get some uh, game time so over to the other centre mid and we have another player who has been riddled with injury all season and it is Czech Teote when he does play though I feel that he's very important to the side and uh, when we did bring in Cole back I think it was to plug the uh, actual gaps in the uh, sort of midfield a little bit as well but he has improved every season that goes by he's becoming a little less aggressive as well in this play he always picks up his yellow cards though but I like Teote he's a good player and I feel now especially if we can get all our sentiments fit we've got it's nice competition there especially with Anita as well as a substitute but Anita's improved although that last pass across uh, at the end of the season that was just terrible so yeah so over to our new man at Tyneside and it is Wijnaldum or Wijnaldum for I think it was 15 million which is quite expensive and I'm super excited for this guy I've never really seen too much of the way he actually does play in real life all that I know is he's got man of the match cards well the purple card informs team of the season so he must be doing good in this air divisie but you know what De Jong is like awful season at Newcastle goes to Edivisie and gets himself a team of the season like <laughs> the league mustn't be that good but if he's got like sort of the ability to score and he's very physical he's fast and I think he is sort of a cam slash centimeter player he's going to do a good job at Newcastle and I think he will fit in well especially with the likes of Tim Krull uh, Jan Matt being Dutch so I'm really looking forward to that signing and sitting behind him as a substitute we've got Kabea he's not suited for the Premier League uh, a lot of people say no give him chance give him time but I've I've seen all that I need to see of him and he's not suited at the club and we're actually trying to do a deal with Dayuvin like loan him out for for a year and just get Dayuvin for like 10 million or something and I don't even know if Dayuvin's good so uh, yeah uh, that, I just don't like him so moving over to the right wing spot and we do have someone who's I guess questionable in this position do I think Suzoko is an out and out winger no do, would I play him there? No. Where do I feel that he's better as a cam and centre forward? Like, without a doubt. I've always said it. Uh, Sissoko plays so much better central. But I feel that because Steve McLaren has actually taken over and the, uh, I think the formation that he used at Derby was a 4-3-3. So he's going to most likely push Sissoko out wide because we don't have any out-and-out -out wingers until, uh, well, hopefully we can sign a few. Um, but Sissoko, great player, would play him central. But for, for the time being, I've put, popped him out wide and we've also got Obertan as a substitute. So over to the opposite side now and we have Rolando Arons or Ronaldo Arons, am I right? No. Uh, but when he was brought into the starting 11, he just looked so positive in his play. He was confident and he's still very young and has so much potential. So it's unfortunate that he was injured. Like the team just looked completely different towards the end. Like it deteriorated towards the end of the season uh, without him in the side. So definitely get him fit, bring him into the starting 11 and just sitting behind him as a substitute. We've got Thauvin. It hasn't, well the deal hasn't crossed the line yet it's still rumored to be around like 10 to 11 million and a deal to swap uh well loan out Kabea to the club and get Thoven in for for well an actual signing so we'll soon find out what happens there so on to the last spot which is the striker and Newcastle have been linked with so many players Mitrovic even Berahino at one stage and also Charlie Austin but Mitrovic Charlie Austin very high up on our radar right now so they haven't been well confirmed yet uh the situation with Mitrovic though is that he wants European football and Porto can offer that but then again Porto don't have the sum of money to purchase him from Anderlecht so it's sort of batting backwards and forwards with that one but Charlie Austin I don't understand why it hasn't been done yet 15 million for a Premier League proven striker to Newcastle like come on just just get just get the money together purchase him we are desperate for a striker we need to score goals and Charlie Austin for me is the better option but Mitrovic looks like a good young player and then obviously sitting in behind as a substitute Perez hopefully Perez can can start like he, he performed so well towards the end of the season he is a little bit weak though up top on his own so uh, depending on what uh, McLaren does maybe change up the formation puts two up top who knows but guys that is my potential Newcastle United squad for FIFA 16 hopefully you have enjoyed let me know in the comment section if your club has been doing any transfer or you're excited about any new signings and I will see you guys on my next video take it easy boys and peace